Hello there, it's Mr. Dang. I'm pleased to announce that these next two videos have a beautiful finish at the end. Everything that you've created up to this point is now going to pay off when you see it in action. I'll start by adding a gallery. Our formula for setting up a game of solitaire is just about finished, but we need a way to show it. A horizontal gallery is going to show each pile of cards. Here, I'm setting the items property of this horizontal gallery to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The number is going to correspond to which column or pile a particular card belongs to. I'm adding a label inside the gallery. I notice that I have to scroll through the entire gallery to see all seven piles. That doesn't work for a game like Solitaire. You have to see everything at once. Here's where the first formula comes in. Our gallery repeats all of the controls inside for each item, one through seven. The template size property determines how much space do I want to give each of those records inside the gallery. For horizontal galleries, this is going to refer to the width of a record. And for vertical galleries, this determines how tall uh, each of the records is going to be. I'm going to be using a relative command. Gallery one dot width means the width of this gallery that we have selected in Power Apps, you can reference any other control by its name, in this case, Gallery 1. After you place a period, you can list down which property of that control you'd like to use. Suppose you have a control that has a lot of calculations on its exact width and height. Well, you would want to reference that control rather than typing in all of these math formulas again. I'm going to subtract the template padding, in other words, the space between each of the records. I'm going to multiply the template padding by seven. And one more, there are seven piles of cards and they're sandwiched between eight of those gaps. Finally, I divide by seven because each pile of cards has the same width. What's going on here? Imagine a brick wall. A gallery is like a brick wall because you have a repeated item, the brick. Our gallery has a known width. It's a constant. The space in between each of those records is the template padding. In every case, you always have one more than the actual number of items. So for this model, we have three bricks and one more gap for a total of four. If we get rid of those gaps, we can figure out how much space each of those records needs. We know that each of those records has the exact same size, so we could just divide by the number of records at that point. Numbers 1 through 7 are now evenly spaced. But this label inside the gallery, eh, there's something off about it. I like to have the objects in my gallery fit the actual gallery. So I'm going to change the width of this label that I added equal to parent, meaning it's going to look at the properties of the gallery that it's inside. In other words, it's parent. And it's going to return whatever template width we had just calculated. So the label is going to fill its container. I'm a little picky. I like to set X and Y to 0 plus 0. Having a calculations has better results when I'm copy pasting. Next, I'm going to add a gallery inside this gallery. This is called nesting. In order to be successful, you have to select an item that's already in the gallery, then go to insert gallery and select the type of gallery you want. For our purposes, we're going to want a vertical gallery. And this is because the cards in any given pile are going to be shown vertically. Can you guess what I'm going to do next? You guessed it. We're going to set this gallery to the template width of the parent gallery. Next, what we want to do is have this gallery rest right below the label we had made. I could use a relative reference. The Y coordinate of control is its vertical position relative to the top of the screen, or in this case, relative to its parent container. What we want to do is start our child gallery, the gallery that's on the inside, gallery two. We want it to start where label one starts. So I type in label one dot Y, and I also want it to add the height of label one. This way, it starts where label one starts, and it sits below label one. I will be setting the height of this child gallery to the template height of this other parent gallery. And I'm going to deduct where this gallery starts. This way, it fills the remaining space between the label 
and the rest of the parent gallery. For my stylistic choice, I don't like to have scroll bars. So for both the parent and the child gallery, I'll go ahead and turn that to false. Let's add some content to the child gallery. Click inside the child gallery where it says add an item from the insert tab and let's place a label inside. I think you know the drill at this point. To make things look neater, I'll make the template size of the child gallery just 40, which is the height of the label. I've got one final step. I want the child gallery to show me all the cards only in this pile. So I'm going to use the filter formula. Filter cards played, in other words, all the cards that you've dealt, show only the cards where the column is equal to this value. The gallery will adapt for each of the records. So when you see the label one at the top, all the cards in the pile one are going to appear there. All the cards in pile two will appear there and so on. All cards in pile seven will appear there. We need to tell the label what to show. I'd like to see the number in the suit of a card that has been selected for this pile. So I can type in this item.num. I used ampersand to connect text. I put a space inside quotation marks to show a space that I'd like to include. And then I write this item.suit to show the suit. This is the moment you've been waiting for. We're going to click the button. You'll see that cards are being drawn and placed into different columns randomly. It stops at 52 because there are no more cards that haven't been played. In the next video, you'll see how we assign a more specific column that we want a card to appear in. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to find the next step in creating your own solitaire app.